I have the best mailman. No matter what, he gets my deliveries to my mailbox. It seems simple, but if you think about the thousands of houses in town and all that mail, it's impressive. How does this happen? Well, he follows a planned route. Switches are the mailman of your network, delivering frames to their destination quickly and efficiently. On a network, these planned routes are based on media access control, MAC address tables. MAC address tables can be learned dynamically and can also be created with static entries. In this episode of Cisco Tech Talk, I'll explain how MAC address tables are created on a Cisco Business Series switch. I'll start by explaining how a MAC table is created dynamically. In this scenario, there are three computers connected to a switch. For simplicity, I have labeled the MAC addresses AAA, BBB, and C. The switch is new, so the MAC address table is blank. To start, the computer with the MAC address of AAA sends a frame to the computer with a MAC address of BBB. When the switch receives the frame, it adds the MAC address of the sender, AAA, as well as the interface on which the frame was received. The switch doesn't know the final destination yet, since the only entry in the MAC address table is the sending device. Therefore, the switch floods the frame out all other ports, trying to reach the destination. The devices that don't have that destination MAC address don't accept the frames. So in this example, the computer with the MAC address of C will reject the frame. The computer with a MAC address of triple B will accept the frame and send back a reply through the switch. The switch adds the triple B MAC address and associated interface to the table. Moving forward, while that address is in the table, any frames for triple B will be sent directly there. This is how the MAC address table is populated dynamically. If you wanna see your current dynamic MAC address table, Navigate to the web user interface of the switch. Select the MAC address tables menu and scroll down to dynamic addresses. Here you will see a list along with some options. For privacy, part of each MAC address has been blurred. However, you can still see the interface and VLAN ID that are associated with them. If you want to erase the entire MAC address list all at once, select the clear table option. You can search by MAC address if you want to view a specific one. The dynamic MAC address table isn't permanent. After a certain period of inactivity, the entries are cleared. The default value for this is 300 seconds, but can be adjusted to any number between 10 and 400. So if you want the MAC address to be refreshed more frequently, decrease the time. Alternatively, by increasing the aging time, the MAC addresses will be retained for a longer period. To change this, scroll up and click on Dynamic Address Settings. For this example, I'll leave it alone. That's the basics for Dynamic MAC Address Tables. Next, I'll move on to Static MAC Address Tables. Static MAC Address Tables are manually entered and always take precedence over Dynamic. They're usually configured as a security measure to prevent Layer 2 spoofing attacks. A spoofing attack is when a hacker spoofs or falsifies a MAC address to change entries in the MAC address table with the goal of gaining access to data. In this example, if a static entry doesn't exist for the MAC address AAA, a hacker could spoof that MAC address and send a packet to the MAC address of BBB. As a result, the switch would update the MAC address table with the new interface number. Packets for AAA would be sent to the new location. To illustrate, the table now shows the MAC address for AAA connected to interface 3 instead of interface 1. If you use a static MAC address, then you can make sure that the MAC address is only available on a certain interface or port. To add a static MAC address entry, return to the Switch Web User Interface. On the left-hand side, navigate to the MAC address tables menu and select a static address. Click on the blue plus button. Specify the MAC address and the interface or port. You can also specify a VLAN ID. Here, I'll enter VLAN 1 since it is the only one configured. Next, 
set up the status, which has four options. Permanent, delete on reset, delete on timeout, and secure. In the permanent mode, the system never removes this MAC address. If the static MAC address is saved in the startup configuration, it is retained after a reboot. For the device on reset, the static MAC address is deleted when the device is reset. The delete on timeout option deletes the MAC address when aging occurs. Lastly, secure is when the MAC address is secure when the interface is in classic locked mode, which is associated with port security. And there you go. You know how MAC address tables are formed and updated and how to set addresses statically if needed. MAC address tables help your switch get the job done right, quickly, and efficiently. Because neither snow, nor rain, nor heat, nor gloom of night, well, you get it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.